In this video, we're going to learn how to use Radical. Radical is a decentralized Web3 Git hosting protocol. It is very similar to something like GitHub or Bitbucket, but instead of running on a centralized server, it's running on a decentralized network of nodes, meaning that it offers a couple of pieces of functionality or characteristics that maybe a centralized version of a Git hosting provider might not offer. Things like censorship resistance, as well as possibly more resiliency, considering that it is not running in a single point of failure, but it's instead replicated across the entire network. So if we go look at the Radical docs, we can kind of get a little bit of an understanding about how some of this stuff works. So here in the docs, we have this paragraph around uh, what is Radical and how it works. And I'll kind of read through this. Radical is a network that is powered by a peer-to-peer -peer replication protocol built on Git called Radical Link. Radical Link extends Git with peer-to-peer -peer discovery by disseminating data via a process called gossip. That is, participants in the network share and spread data that they're interested in by keeping redundant copies locally and sharing, otherwise known as replicating, their data with selected peers. By leveraging Git's smart transfer protocol, Radical Link keeps Git's efficiency when it comes to data replication while offering global decentralized repository storage through the peer-to-peer -peer networking layer. Since all data on the network is stored locally by peers on the network, developers can share and collaborate on Git repositories without relying on intermediaries such as hosted servers. Now, Radical has been out for uh, uh, quite a, a while now, but they just recently launched the Radical CLI. And this is kind of what I've been waiting on for them to launch because this is how I've uh, been interacting with Git for most of my career. So I thought um, that once the CLI was uh, released, I would probably start using it more often. And I've tried it out and it's actually really nice. So in this video, I kind of wanted to show how to use the CLI. And what we basically want to do is kind of just give a basic introduction around um, how you might use this. So essentially, uh, you would basically be doing you know all of the same stuff you would with uh, the GitHub or, or whatever uh, hosted version of Git you might be using in the past, but instead we want to do this with Radical. So a couple of things you might want to do would be to you know uh, clone a repo or maybe create a repo, maybe push updates, stuff like that. So we're going to kind of look at some of that basic level stuff, just really how to get started. So what I want to do is basically. Um, uh, initialize an existing repository and then push it up to uh, Radical, then make some updates, then push those updates, and then maybe clone that repo and, and kind of go through that whole process. And also maybe take a look at the Radical CLI. So that's what we're going to do. This is going to be a fairly short video. Um, to get started, we're going to go ahead and go to the Radical CLI docs. Now, I think the docs are in a couple different places. So here I'm in their GitHub repo. You can also go here to uh, this link in their GitHub repo, and there are some docs here around the Radical CLI. Um, the first thing that you're gonna do is get started by installing uh, the Radical CLI from um, either uh, Cargo, download the actual repository, or you can use this command here. This is kind of what I'm doing on my Mac. Of course, uh, depending on the environment that you're in, you might uh, choose to go with Homebrew or something else. But uh, basically, this is the command that I uh, used, and everything installed great. Uh, I think one thing I had to do was to update my version of Rust by using Rust up, and uh, that was pretty easy to do. And then once I had that installed, I go to my command line, and now I have this command uh, called rad. So if I run rad, we now see that we have a list of commands. So um, one interesting command that I thought was uh, pretty nice is that this ls command. So if I run rad ls, I can actually see all of the different projects that I've deployed, which is pretty cool um, because you can kind of just be able to, to run through those and, and pull down additional projects that you might like to do in the past. Um, but what I want to do is actually go ahead and pull down one of my repos that I have on GitHub right now and maybe push this up to Radical. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and clone this repo. Now this could be um, also a fresh repo, so I'm not, you don't have to kind of be starting with an ex existing uh, Git repo. You could actually just create a file, initialize uh, a Git repository, and then push that up to Radical as well. But I'm starting off with an existing repo. So I'm just going to say git clone, go ahead and clone this repo. All right. So what I have here is uh, my project. So what I basically want to do is say rad init. And this is going to initialize a new Radical project. And I'll just take that name there um, for the description. Maybe I'll just copy this here. 
and this has gone ahead and initialized this project. So um, what I can do is say rad dot, and it will kind of give me the hash. And then if I want to push it up, I can say rad push. And then uh, when you initially set up your CLI, it's going to uh, allow you to set a password. So I'm just going to go ahead and enter my password. And there are a couple of different uh, nodes that you can sync with. So if I go to Radical, and we go to Try It Out, we go to the Web Client, here you'll see that we have a couple of seed nodes. And this is kind of essentially where you're going to be uh, pushing your code to. And I don't really know the difference between these, but I'm assuming there are going to be more of these in the future. Um, but let's just say we want to choose uh, Pine since there's like less projects maybe. We would just choose that. And this is going to go ahead and push that up there. So now we have a couple of uh, different links where we can kind of um, see where this is available. But let's go here to Pine. Let's refresh and see if there's now eight projects. And there is. And now if I go to this Polygon, Ethereum, Next.js marketplace, I see that my repo is now available. So that's pretty cool. Um, I can also just copy this URL here, and I can go and paste that in, and that should also take me here as well. So we have that. Um, here in the user interface, it shows you how to clone, and you can clone either using the Radical CLI or using the Git CLI. So you can say Git clone and have that there, or you can say Rad clone and have it there as well. So um, let's push an update. So what I want to do is just open this up in my text editor. And what I might say is let's like differentiate this repo by going to the readme and saying on Radical and saving that. So if I go back here, I can say get status. And then I can say rad push. All right, now if I go look at that updated version, then I see now on radical, which is pretty nice. Now let's say that we want to iterate on this project and pull it down somewhere else. So I might just go ahead and just delete that repo. And I might go ahead and clone. And I'll copy this to my clipboard, paste it there. And now I have my repo there. There's a couple of other commands that you can use. So um, you can authenticate with multiple profiles. So if I run rad auth, I can kind of see the current profiles that I have and the current one that I'm using. Um, you can say rad self to show information about the current um, profile that you're using. Um, you can add other remotes. By default, you're set up with a remote called rad. And that's kind of the, the main remote or the origin remote. Um, you can pull updates just like you could with Git by running rad pull. Um, you can actually check out. So um, for instance, if I wanted to, to remove that and I want to say uh, rad ls, I can actually, I believe, say like rad checkout there. And then I have now this uh, this project that I just pulled down. So we could do that. Um, there's a couple of other things that you can do by uh, connecting your Ethereum account and your ENS uh, address and stuff like that. So I haven't actually tried out all of these commands yet. I've just been playing around with the last couple of days. But what I really like about the CLI is it kind of offers a really, really nice set of basic functionality and it's really easy to use and it offers me a way to push my code up to this decentralized network and um, you know just have it available there as well and i kind of like to use uh, web3 protocols when i can so i'm going to probably start using radical more often uh, the cool thing is that you might just do anyway is just have it available in both places 
Um, you know, if you want to push your code up to Git, you can still do that. But you can also have it available in Radical uh, for whatever reason. Uh, you might want to use that as well. So um, that's kind of it. We just walked through the Radical CLI. I'm still a beginner here. I'm still kind of learning all this stuff, but I wanted to kind of share with you what I've learned so far and how you might use this. Um, if you're from Radical and you're watching this, um, I found that some of the things that I just went through weren't really that doc well documented. So uh, just consider adding like a getting started guide that shows how to do all this stuff. That would be really cool. And uh, other than that, uh, great job on everything. So that's it. Thanks for checking out this video and uh, consider subscribing to my YouTube channel for future videos. Thank you.